Assalamualaikum and good morning to all my students. So today you will learn chapter 1, Introduction to Statistics. So here is the content in chapter 1. So 1.1 Overview, 1.2 Statistical Terminologies, 1.3 Data Collection and Sampling Techniques, and 1.4 Role of Computer in Statistics. We go to 1.1 Overview and 1.2 statistical terminologies so here is one of the example of statistics okay when you see the data okay the percentage or everything about the numbers that is a statistics okay so what is statistic so when you see the numbers here okay ten thousand okay the word of read, average, median, estimated, and the percentage, all of this is about the statistics. Okay, so what is the meaning of the statistic? So, statistic is the sciences of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, present, interpret, and draw conclusion from data okay so what is data data is any values observation or measurement that have been collected so before you conduct a statistic you must have a data so the uses of statistics in management okay so first to visualize and summarize business data and then to reach conclusion about a large group based on data collected from a small group to make reliable forecasts that are based on statistical models for prediction and to improve business processes using managerial approaches okay case okay. so the important thing is statistic is a population and sample okay so look at this figure Okay, so we have a population. Okay, for example, our population is a numbers of cars. Okay, so we have several numbers of cars here. That one is a population. So all the cars is the population. Okay, when you select one of the cars in the population, that is a sample. Okay, for example, we take the first car here second car third car and the fourth car so all of these we call as a sample you take it from the population that is a sample okay so population, the entire set of individuals or object of interest or the measurement obtained from all individuals or object of interest. But for the sample, a portion or part of the population of interest. Okay, so means that sample is the subset of the population. Okay. So types of population, so we have two types. The first one is tangible population. The second one is conceptual population. So what is the difference between tangible and conceptual? Okay, tangible is countable. You can count it. It is possible to count and the units contained in the population. Okay, but conceptual, it is impossible to count. The units contained in the population. Okay, look at the example. So, the number of vehicles. Okay, so you can count the number of vehicles. So, that is a tangible. The number of birth per year. You can count it. Okay, the number of words in the books. Okay, so that is a tangible population. But for conceptual, so look at the example. The number of germs in the body of a patient. You cannot count how many germs in the body of the patient of malaria. And the number of star. Okay. 
we cannot count it. So that is the difference between tangible and conceptual population. Either you can count it or you cannot count it. Okay. Okay, then we look at the parameter and statistic. So what is a statistic and what is a parameter? So parameter is summary measures for the population. Okay, that is a parameter. But statistic a summary measure for the sample. Okay, you look at the box here, the pin the pink box. Okay. So statistic and parameter. So every uh, calculation that you made on population that is a parameter. For example, you calculate mean for population. You calculate variance for population. You calculate standard deviation for population or proportion for population. Everything for population, that one is a parameter. So that is the symbol for that particular calculation. Okay. And uh, statistics, everything you calculate for the sample, okay, that is a statistic. We call it as a statistic. Okay, look at example 1.1. So, travel agent claims that the average number of rooms in large hotels in Pahang is 500. And the standard deviation is 165. So, sample of 7 hotels in Genting Highlands is selected and the average number of rooms is found to be 435 with a standard deviation of 15. So, based on the above example. So, what is the population? Okay, so the population under study is all large hotel in Pahang. Okay. So, what is the sample? Okay. Sample is 7. A sample of 7. You look at here. Okay. So, your sample is 7 hotels. So, the population under study is tangible. Why? Since there are finite number of large hotels. Okay. So, you can count the number of hotels, right? So, that is a tangible. So, the characteristics variables is number of rooms. Okay. Means that you calculate for the number of rooms. That is the variable. So, the parameter. Okay. Like I said before this. Parameter for population and statistic for sample. Okay. So, you look at here. Okay. So, the average number of rooms in large hotel is 500 so this is a mu mean for population and the standard deviation is 165 that is a sigma okay so how about 435 435 is for sample and 15 is a standard deviation for sample okay So, this is the definition and types of statistics. Okay, so under statistics, we have two types. Descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So, what is a descriptive statistics? So, a procedure is used to summarize, organize and make a sense of a set of scores of measurements or observations. Okay. So, do not attempt to make prediction and draw a conclusion about the population from which the sample are taken. But for the inferential, a procedure is used to estimate. Okay, the word of estimate or predict the determination of association between two variables, generalize observation, made with sample to population from which they were selected. Concerned with making estimation or prediction and drawing conclusion about population based on sample. So what can I say? The difference between descriptive and inferential is descriptive statistic, okay, 
you must make a experimental first before you get the exact value the exact numbers but for the inferential it's just a prediction or estimation okay you didn't get the exact number of the statistic that is the inferential statistics so we have exercise 1.3 here okay so i want you to identify the type of statistic either that is inferential or descriptive statistics so later we will discuss about this in the class okay then we go to types of variables so what is a variable variable to characteristic of the population of interest for example in that population you want to know the monthly income okay you want to know the age the gender the level of education the type of house that is a variable what do you want to calculate what do you want to know that is a variable okay so under variable we have a quantitative quantitative okay that is a numerical okay and another one is a qualitative that is attribute so what is the difference between numerical and attribute so numerical measured on numerical scales Okay, so yields numerical response. For example, how tall are you? Okay, so the height is a number, right? So that number is a represent to the quantitative numerical. But for the qualitative attribute, measured with non-numerical skill, yields categorical response. For example, are you a Malaysian? Okay. So we have two category, yes and no. That is an attribute. It's a non-numerical. Okay, it's not a numerical. And then under numerical, we have uh, two categories. First one is a discrete. Second one is continuous. Okay, under numerical. So discrete is a numerical response arise from a counting process. For example, how many siblings do you have? So you have 4, 3, 2. That is a discrete. You didn't get any decimal point, right? Okay, that is a discrete. So continuous numerical response arises from a measuring process. So what is your weight? For example, your weight is 48.5. So you have a decimal places. That is continuous. So discrete, non-decimal places. Continuous is a decimal places number. Okay, there is a difference between discrete and continuous. So we go to scale of measurement. So we have four scale here. Nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. So actually, nominal scale and ordinal scales is for qualitative data okay and interval scale ratio scale for quantitative data okay so we look at the nominal scale and ordinal scale first okay so nominal scale measurements where a number is assigned to represent something or someone okay something or someone this means that it's non-numerical for example jersey number support per players or uh, make of car okay so other example for nominal scale for example occupation okay so occupation so we have lawyer, doctor, lecturer. Okay, so all of this is a nominal scale. Okay, it's a non numeric data. Okay, for ordinal scale, same 
to the nominal scale which is qualitative data non numeric data but the data can be order or rank okay for example finishing order in a competition educational education level world university ranking okay so you can rank the data okay so the key point here nominal scale cannot rank the data but for the ordinal scale you can rank the data okay that is the difference between nominal and ordinal okay so then we go to the quantitative data which is interval scale and ratio scale okay so interval measurement where the values have no true zero no true zero but the ratio scale has a true zero so what is the meaning of no true zero and has a true zero okay i give you an example for the ratio scale first has a true zero means that zero means nothing zero means nothing okay so for example uh, number of sales calls made distant class okay number of books number of soft car okay for example i ask you how many car you have then you said zero so it means that you don't have a car so that one is a ratio scale but for interval scale okay you look at the example here temperature in celsius or fahrenheit okay so you get zero degrees okay for example Huh? Your temperature is 0 degrees. So, 0 doesn't mean nothing. Okay. 0 doesn't mean nothing. Means that, it doesn't mean that you don't have a temperature, right? So, 0 means, uh, still have the meaning of that value. Okay. For the intervals. So, that is the uh, different between interval scale and ratio scale okay so as usual we have SSS 1.6 so I wanted to do that and all of this SSS will be discussed in uh, our online class later okay so that's all for chapter 1 thank you everyone